I'm Andy Panko of Tenon Financial. Welcome to Retirement Planning Demystified. In this video, I'll be discussing four hidden taxes that can affect you in retirement. While you're probably aware that regular income taxes apply throughout your whole life, you may not be aware there are additional taxes that can impact you during your retirement. One of my models when it comes to retirement planning is it's not what you get, it's what you keep. Taxes always matter. If you can minimize Uncle Sam's cut of your income, you obviously get to keep and use more of it, and that's a good thing. The first hidden retirement tax I'd like to discuss is income tax on Social Security benefits. Now to be fair, this tax isn't actually hidden per se, but you may not be aware there are ways you can plan and manage your income to minimize the tax on your Social Security. At the federal level, anywhere between 0 to 85% of your Social Security benefits may be taxed. The amount subject to taxation depends on your quote-unquote provisional income, which is otherwise known as your combined income. Your provisional income is equal to one half of your Social Security benefits, plus all your other gross income, plus non-taxable income, such as interest from municipal bonds. If your provisional income is below $25,000 if you're single, or $32,000 if you're married, then none of your Social Security benefits will be taxable. If your provisional income is between $25,000 and $34,000 if you're single, or $32,000 to $44,000 if you're married, up to half of your Social Security benefits may be taxable. If your provisional income is above $34,000 if you're single, or $44,000 if you're married, up to 85% of your Social Security benefits may be taxable. You may notice these thresholds are pretty small. That's because they haven't changed since they were put in place nearly 30 years ago. When Social Security first began in the 1930s, benefits were not taxed at all, but that changed in the early 80s. The provisional income thresholds put in place at the time were intentionally large enough that only high-income people would have to pay tax on their Social Security benefits. However, the thresholds have never been increased. If they were to be adjusted by the amount of inflation we've experienced over the last 30 years, the threshold amounts would all be about two and a half times larger. The second hidden tax is the potential loss of premium tax credits you may otherwise be eligible to receive when buying private health insurance on the marketplace. Premium tax credits are subsidies you get in the form of tax credits to help defray the cost of paying for private health insurance. Now, the calculation for determining how much premium tax credit you're eligible for is quite complex and beyond the scope of this video. But the important thing to know is that the amount of tax credit you may be able to get is dependent on your gross income. All those equal, the larger your gross income, the smaller your tax credit, if any. The premium amount for a single 60-year-old to buy private health insurance on the marketplace could easily exceed $1,000 per month. Now, depending on your gross income, you could be eligible for hundreds of dollars of premium tax credits each month. Therefore, keeping your income low enough to qualify for premium tax credits can result in a very real decrease in taxes. Or, to look at it from the other angle, losing premium tax credits because you have high income can result in a very real increase in taxes. The loss of premium tax credits is commonly an issue for those who retire before age 65 when Medicare eligibility begins. For example, if you retire at 60, there could be five years where you'll need to bridge the gap between having employer-sponsored health insurance from your old job and signing up for Medicare at 65. While you may be able to extend coverage of your old employer's medical benefits through COBRA, that typically only lasts up to 18 months and is a very expensive option. The third hidden tax goes by the name IRMA, which is an acronym for Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount. This is a fancy term for Medicare premium surcharges. In other words, depending how much gross income you have, you may have to pay more each month for your Medicare coverage. For 2020, the base premium for Medicare Part B is $144.60 per month. But if you're single and your gross income is over $87,000 or married and your gross income is over $174,000, you'll have to pay a higher Medicare premium each month. For example, if your gross income is just $1 over that first threshold, your Part B premium will increase to $202.40 per month. That's an increase of almost $60 per month. Above this first threshold, there are a few other stepped up gross income thresholds and respective premium increases, all the way up to the highest gross income threshold of $500,000 if you're single or $750,000 if you're married. If your gross income is beyond that level, it will cost you $491.60 per month for Medicare Part B. 
Now, one important thing to note about armor surcharges is that they're based on your reported gross income from two years prior. That's because they're keyed off your most recently filed tax return. For example, your armor surcharges for 2020 were set at the end of 2019 based on what was at the time your most recently filed tax return, which would have been for 2018. Another thing to keep in mind with armor surcharges is that they can change year to year. If you have unusually high gross income in one year because you have a large one-time gain from something like selling a business or selling a second home, you may only have higher Medicare premiums for just one year. Since IRMA is recalculated every year, your Medicare premium surcharges may go up or down year to year as your gross income goes up or down. The fourth and final hidden tax I want to mention is the Net Investment Income Tax, or NIT, N-I-I-T. NIT is an additional 3.8% tax which applies to most forms of passive income if your gross income is above a certain threshold. For 2020, the gross income threshold is $200,000 if you're single or $250,000 if you're married. The types of passive income subject to NIT include things like dividends and interest, capital gains from selling investments, rental income, and royalty income. Now, given its relatively high gross income thresholds, NIT thankfully won't apply to most retirees. But if your income is hovering around the threshold, NIT is definitely something you want to pay close attention to. Now, before wrapping up this video, I'd like to share a few other comments about these hidden taxes. First, you're probably asking what you can do to avoid or minimize the impact of each of these. There unfortunately isn't a single answer to that, but generally speaking, the more you can plan ahead to minimize your sources of taxable income in retirement, the better your chances of reducing the adverse impacts of these hidden taxes. For example, withdrawing from Roth IRAs or Roth 401ks do not count as gross income and therefore will not contribute to you potentially hitting any of these thresholds mentioned here. On the other hand, Withdrawals from traditional tax-deferred IRAs or 401ks do count as gross income and will count towards these thresholds. Second, the information I referenced with regards to married couples assume you file a joint return. If you instead file separate returns, most of these hidden taxes will be more punitive than what's discussed in this video. Third, I generically refer to quote-unquote gross income throughout this video, but each of the four hidden taxes uses a different measure of gross income. As previously mentioned, Social Security taxation is based off provisional income, and provisional income is different from the modified adjusted gross income used for determining premium tax credits, which is different from the modified adjusted gross income used for IRMA, which is different from the modified adjusted gross income used for NIT. Fourth, this video only references federal income taxes. State tax laws have a lot of variation state by state. Therefore, this video does not attempt to address how each state would treat these matters. And finally, each of these four hidden taxes is more complex than what's shown in this video. As such, I plan on doing additional videos to dig into these topics a bit more. The purpose of this video is to at least make you aware of the existence of each of these taxes and to provide high-level overviews to lay the groundwork for further, more detailed explanations. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can be the first to know when new videos are posted. And don't forget to subscribe to my monthly newsletter, Retirement Planning Insights, which provides practical and useful retirement planning tips and information. Also, join my free Facebook group, Taxes in Retirement, where you can get answers to your retirement-related tax questions. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.